Overcoming Strongholds. Hi everyone, it's Maria Maumela. Thank you for joining me. I first would like to thank God I was not well at all for the past few days. Yesterday I laid flat. I only set up to eat and then I would have to lie back. So I'm so happy like this morning I woke up with a desire to record a video. And even though I was not feeling strong and I did not have enough energy to sit up, I still decided to record a video. And even upon my first video, I felt strength. So I've, I'm surprised even now I still have the energy to keep going. So I first would like to thank the Lord for, for, for touching my body and for healing and for strengthening me. Amen. Um, I wanted to talk on strongholds. Okay. Now, with, with, with regards to strongholds, strongholds are exactly that. It's something that has a stronghold on you. Okay? So now, um, I have made an example of this um, in one of my first videos. But for those who do, who, do, who do not know the story, this is how the story goes. Like, you know, I was once married. So in my in-laws, in my, in my in-law side, in my ex-husband's side, there was this woman. She was, I feel like, I think it's wrong to say she just told herself she's going to make my life miserable. Let's just say she didn't like me that much. She, she used whatever, whatever, whatever she could use whatever time she had, whatever she could use just to make my life miserable. And I remember looking at her, thinking thinking like, but this woman, she's a Christian, or she calls herself a Christian, okay? Now, with regards to whether her fruits are, what about the fruits, is she a Christian or not? That's irrelevant, okay? Sticking to the story, she she's a Christian, or she calls herself a Christian, she used to make my life miserable. And I remember how she used to like to be around me and my ex-husband. And I, I just tried in many different ways to let my ex know that this woman just didn't like me and she wasn't for me. And I didn't know how to deal with this woman. And so I, I, I was surprised now to realize that I was starting to harbor bitterness and it, it quickly, it quickly became hate because that's how I felt. And it, it came to a point where whenever her name was mentioned, I would cringe. And I remember thinking like, this is not me. Like, this is not me. I mean, I do not ever want to consider anybody an enemy. I'd rather have someone consider me as their enemy because like, I want to live in love and I'm just trying. I know we cannot, um, we don't buy our way to heaven, but the Bible did say, work your salvation. So I was not willing to, to let myself go to hell for this woman because that's how I felt. I felt hate and it bothered me. It just bothered me. I do not know why it took me so long to bring it before God, but eventually I did. And I said, Lord, I feel indifferent towards this woman. I do not want her in my presence. I even, even her name, the sound of her voice makes me just want to leave. I prayed about it and I still had the same feelings. Whenever her name was mentioned, whenever my ex spoke to her on the phone, I still cringed and I just felt, I just felt all these negative emotions towards her. Okay. And I, I just wasn't okay with her at all. And I kept on praying and I realized that, but I'm praying and the Lord is not doing anything. But what else could I do? So I just kept praying. So every time her name was mentioned, I would cringe. And I thought to myself, let me try a different way. Whenever I'm faced with this problem, let me pray. So whenever I'd hear her voice, I would just cringe. Like, like it would happen like subconsciously. Like I couldn't control it. I would cringe and I would pray. I say, Father, I have a hate for this woman. I want to be pure. I want you to make my heart pure. I do not know how to get over this. Like I've, I've prayed concerning this woman in different ways. I would hear her voice and my, my blood would boil. And I would pray. I say, Father, my blood boils over this woman. Help me. Help me. Help me. I kept praying and praying over this. Okay. 
And that's the nice thing about being delivered by the Lord. You never really know when you got delivered. Because I remember one day I was just watching television with my ex-husband and then she called. And then he spoke with her and after a while she's like, oh, so-and-so says hello. And I'm like, oh, say hi. And I carried on watching television and I'm like, what? Me? I didn't feel anything. My heart did not boil. I did not cringe. I did not. I was surprised. I'm like, wow. So when did God remove the, the hate? When did God remove? Like, I do not know when it happened, but I was so happy. So I decided like, well, I need to pay more attention next time to see what happens. The next, the next time I heard her voice, nothing happened. And I saw her, I still felt nothing. So I was like, oh my gosh, the Lord has really done it for me. So strongholds are exactly that. They have a stronghold on us. If we think you're going to come with our little two minute prayer once or twice a month, it's not going to work. Like I said, I decided that whenever I felt that neg those negative emotions, that hate, I would pray. And it really worked for me. So in whatever we battle with, whatever, whatever bad habit, whatever sin, whatever, let's say um, you are battling with alcohol. If you are battling with alcohol and you find yourself, your flesh not be being able to help it. And even as you find yourself holding that glass, you pray and you say, Lord, help me to stop drinking it. Even if you say the prayer drinking it, keep on saying it every time you hold that glass. One day you will not be able to, to drink it. And something about the Lord delivering, something strange about the Lord delivering us from bad habits is that even though the Lord delivers us, Sometimes, somehow, we want to go back to our old habits. As the Bible would say, um, it's like a person or it's like a dog going back to his vomit. Sometimes we do that. But now, when the Lord has touched you and you try to go back to that thing, that thing is going to reject you. It's as if now there is a different DNA in your body. Watch as your body rejects that thing. Watch as you now have, have a, a different reaction whether you'll be vomiting or whether the taste would have changed, whatever, even if it's a cigarette. I do not care that even if you were to hold a cigarette and keep smoking it and keep saying, Father, help me remove the urge. Father, change me, remove this habit. Keep on praying. Keep on every time you hold that cigarette. Keep on praying and you will see what's going to happen. So as the believers and as we learn to conquer our battles <clears throat> and our bad habits, let us learn to share with each other how we have conquered them so that we can all win together as the body of Christ. Because someone out there is expecting to be delivered. When some when through through prayer, consistent prayer, they can be delivered. It's amazing how we want instant everything. Yes, us, the microwave generation. It's amazing how we want everything to happen suddenly and quickly. It does not always happen like that. Some people's deliverance is instant. Some people, it takes time. You can be delivered over time and not even realizing you've been delivered. Yawning is a sign of being delivered. Even coughing, even sneezing, that different things, even um, burping, even hiccups, that different things that would be happening to a person during prayer and they may not even be able to grasp that God is doing the work, that God is actually doing the work. And sometimes it might not even happen at that time of prayer. It can happen at a certain time of the day. Like, like God is in charge. The Holy Spirit is in charge. Even with regards to healing, God does not always heal us instantly. Sometimes it just takes faith. One step at a time. Like me, I'm, I believe this is my third video that I'm recording. And yet I'm saying yesterday I was lying flat all day. Do you see? Sometimes it's just a matter of taking one step. And then they strength. Then another step, and then they strength. So we must not always um, expect everything to be instant. Although I do not have any problem with instant deliverance, instant anything. Okay, I am a part of the microwave generation, so yes, I do love that, and I do appreciate anything instant. So yeah, this is what I wanted to share. Thank you. God bless.